James. Gears of War has returned for the next generation with a new engine and a new development team. The Gears series has a rich history of pushing technical boundaries. It's a series which helped Unreal Engine become the technology platform of choice for many developers last generation, and also a series which influenced the design of the Xbox 360 console itself. But times have changed and larger companies have embraced internally developed engine solutions this time around. As a result, we've seen fewer big titles this generation utilizing Epic's technology. That doesn't mean Unreal Engine hasn't continued to thrive, however. Unreal Engine 4 is one of the most flexible tools in the industry today, and the Coalition is one of its closest partners. Starting work as early as 2012, the Coalition has crafted perhaps the first truly big budget AAA console game using Unreal Engine 4 to date. The question we have then is this, does Gears of War 4 live up to its heritage by pushing technical boundaries? And how about the PC version? This is the first time a Gears game has been made available day and date on two platforms after all. Let's dive in and find out. Alright, time to introduce the new cog to the old cog and clear these bucket heads out of my house. At its core, Gears of War 4 is built on one of the latest releases of Unreal Engine 4, version 4.11, which has been tailored to deliver a high-performance AAA experience on both the Xbox One and PC platforms. Unreal Engine 4 brings a great number of benefits to the table and many of these benefits result in tangible improvements for the end users. From the high-quality temporal anti-aliasing solution, which delivers some of the best image quality we've seen on Xbox One, to the composite texture maps which help minimize surface aliasing, all the way to the more advanced lighting and shadow systems available, including the recently added capsule shadow feature. On top of the already feature-rich technology base, the Coalition has implemented a number of custom extensions designed to further enhance the experience. This includes features such as geometry caching, which enables advanced rigid body simulations such as this to run on the GPU in real time. This type of destruction enables some incredibly impressive moments throughout the campaign, and it plays a key role in many of the game's biggest sequences. We also see the inclusion of volumetric light scattering, which is used sparingly but effectively across the game in a variety of situations. It can definitely enhance the atmosphere in many ways. Then we have the remarkable procedural wind system used to create dramatic scenes such as this. It's a fully scriptable system which can be modified by the designers, enabling a wide range of conditions throughout each level. This particular system ties into the story, of course, but it also has a significant impact on gameplay. Player movement is modified by these values, for instance, making it more difficult to move and fight in highly windy conditions. Of course, the game also takes wind occlusion into account, which shields the player character from the stronger gusts by moving behind cover. We even see real-time global illumination bounce lighting. In this scene, for instance, notice how your flashlight beam influences the color of the surrounding world lighting. As I point at this red material here, the surroundings then take on a red hue. It's a nice touch. The overall visual package on display here then is nothing short of exceptional. At first glance, the game actually might appear somewhat subdued, but the more time you spend with it, the more it starts to impress. Gears has never targeted full-on realism, instead opting for a more stylized look, and Gears 4 continues this tradition. Character models are finely detailed with realistic clothing and armor, the skin shading isn't as realistic as some other recent titles such as Quantum Break or Uncharted 4, but it works really well with the stylized art direction here. And the materials and textures used across the world itself also shine, giving the environment a unique look and feel. Gears 4 also features an excellent use of color. The game follows a timeline which sees our characters begin their day of combat outdoors in a brightly lit environment, followed by fighting off enemies at sunset before heading out for a cold, dark night. As you descend underground then, things become suitably darker. There's certainly plenty of visual variety in here. 
This is all delivered as one of the best cross-platform releases we've seen in ages. Whether you're playing on Xbox One or the PC, you can expect a great release here. When compared against the Ultra preset on the PC, the Xbox One version actually stacks up quite well. If you look closely, you'll spot some things like a reduction in foliage density, some lower precision effects and the like, but when you consider just how crisp and clean the image quality is, and how consistent the performance generally is, it's difficult to complain. This is easily the most technically accomplished Unreal Engine 4 title available on consoles right now, and one of the most solid Xbox One games in general. It's nice to see that the Xbox One version doesn't simply fall into a PC preset either. Looking at the vegetation distance, for instance, we see that Xbox One falls somewhere between high and medium settings. It's clear that the team has spent time customizing the experience to get the best performance out of Xbox One. And it even has some of its own advantages as well. If you're using an Xbox One S, for instance, with a capable television, you can actually enjoy the game in glorious high dynamic range mode. This helps things such as the sky and specular highlights illuminate much more brightly, leading to some truly beautiful scenes. But this is a first party release, so it really shouldn't be a surprise that the Xbox One version of Gears 4 is great. What is surprising, however, is just how good the PC version of the game is. The Universal Windows platform has played host to a number of ports this year that simply didn't run well on most PCs, but Gears 4 is the first title that truly stems the tide. It's one of the most optimized PC releases we've seen in general for quite some time. Right away you know it's serious business when you see the options menu with an unbelievable number of choices on offer, with each setting offering an idea of how much it will impact performance. There's also a nice benchmark here that you can run which gives you an idea of how the game holds up with various settings. Of course, this is a nice inclusion, but hardly unheard of. What we didn't expect, however, is this excellent post-benchmark screen that gives you a real idea of where your system is bottlenecking. It's a nice touch which actually makes the benchmark portion of the game addictive in its own right. We went ahead and ran the benchmark using all four of the available presets to give you a better idea of how it looks in those different modes. This includes the Ultra, High, Medium, and Low preset. Now if we take a moment and jump over to an actual in-game cutscene, here's what we see. The difference between Ultra and Low is actually quite an interesting thing to see here. Post-processing effects are eliminated completely, scene complexity is pared back dramatically, textures appear much lower resolution with lots of blurry surfaces throughout this whole sequence, shadows have taken a hit, and then things like foliage are also pared way back. Now here's another interesting scene then, a motorcycle escape sequence which sees Marcus and JD riding together through an obstacle course of sorts. This time we're doing a four-way split, showcasing each preset during a high-speed action scene. Even while moving at high speed though, the loss in detail, reduced lighting and texture quality, and the loss of post-processing all really stick out here. This is certainly one scene where motion blur brings a lot to the table. As for the individual settings, there are a ton of them here, and perhaps too many to go through in this video, but I did want to focus on a few of the more impactful or interesting ones, starting with ambient occlusion. As always, this influences the quality of the game's contact shadows, but this is one setting I feel you'll want to stick with at least the high option. When you drop down to medium or off, the results are significantly less impressive and environment consistency takes a hit. I do think the performance cost is well worth it here. It's also possible to adjust the intensity of the ambient occlusion feature, something which reminds me of the SSAO darkening feature available in Crisis. It's interesting to see the two extremes here. Foliage draw distance is another important setting which I feel is critical to the overall scene construction in the game. Once you dip below the high setting, Enough foliage is omitted from the scene that it begins to look empty. It even influences other little details such as the stones in this scene on the ground. Texture quality is of course another big deal as we've noted earlier in the video, with the lower detail setting producing highly blurry results. 
Of course, Gears of War 4 is VRAM hungry, so GPUs with less than 4GB of VRAM may not be able to take advantage of the higher settings at all. Then we have another useful feature here, which is the FOV slider, which ranges from 100 here at the widest, to 80, which is the default and plays pretty well, all the way down to 60, which is very narrow indeed. We also have to mention the inclusion of the insane settings. It only applies to two of the settings, but these are basically ultra high end options, which are intended to future proof the game. And smartly, these are not enabled by default with the ultra preset. You have to turn them on manually. So first we have the depth of field ultra preset, which simply increases the precision of the depth of field effect in cutscenes, producing results more in line with what you'd expect from a real camera lens. The difference isn't really worth the hit right now, I feel, but it's nice to know it's there for future replays of the game. Then we have the insane screen space reflections option, which uses a new technique to produce more accurate reflections. A filter is used to more realistically blur the reflections themselves, while some of the more traditional artifacts you expect from screen space solutions have been eliminated here as well. The results look really good, I have to say, but the performance penalty is steep and probably not worth using right now. So how about campaign performance on Xbox One then? As with previous games in the series, Gears of War 4 targets 30 frames per second during the campaign, and impressively, it's the smoothest game in the series yet. I captured most of my initial playthrough of the campaign on the normal difficulty, and the performance was extremely consistent throughout. When combined with the excellent motion blur, which is just light enough that it won't bother those who dislike the effect, the game looks and moves very smoothly indeed. That said, some users have reported issues with performance in certain areas, suggesting that there are moments when performance can actually slip beneath 30 frames per second. I actually went back and replayed the first two acts on hardcore difficulty and tested some of these mentioned scenes, and I actually never ran into any issues at all. So while it's certainly possible that some people might run into small bouts of slowdown in select situations, which is usually the case in most games these days, the overwhelming majority of the experience, and in fact my entire playthrough, were very stable indeed. I also went through and tested the game on both an Xbox One and an Xbox One S. The footage being shown here was all captured from a regular Xbox One though, since it is the most common system in the wild, but both machines turn an excellent performance throughout, you can expect that much. As I mentioned in the multiplayer performance analysis then, Gears of War 4 does make use of dynamic resolution scaling, but the majority of the campaign experience does appear to operate around a full 1080p, which is very nice indeed. The takeaway here then is that you should expect overwhelmingly solid performance on Xbox One. As for the PC version, well we're still checking the game out on various GPUs just to determine how well it scales. This footage here is of the benchmark mode running on the 980 Ti using the ultra preset with resolution scaling and frame rate caps disabled, and you can see that it holds up very well. I had also already tested it on a GTX 970 previously, but now I've also spent some time with the game on an AMD R9 290X. These two cards are in a similar ballpark, and they turned in reasonably similar performance here as well, but at least according to the benchmark, the AMD card actually does turn in slightly faster performance. We also use the latest drivers intended for Gears of War 4 when testing both cards, I should note. But again, this is all preliminary testing here, and just kind of my basic impressions. And in fact, as you can tell by now, the majority of these impressions have been highly positive across the board. But are there any issues here to take note of? Well, first I wanted to mention the particle system here. The game's particles and fire effects both update at a lower rate, which can appear somewhat strange when you're running the game at higher frame rates on the PC. You can see the kind of mismatch I'm talking about here by looking out at the flames in this scene which appear to be animating at a different rate than the actual frame rate, which is 60 frames per second in this case. Then there is the issue of cutscenes. Gears of War 4 makes use of both real-time and pre-rendered cutscenes, and on the PC, we noted some odd frame pacing issues at times when playing back these videos, and also found that they stuck out like a sore thumb when transitioning from high-resolution 60 frames per second gameplay to somewhat compressed 30 frames per second 1080p videos. Of course, this is hardly anything new for most PC ports, but still, it's something to mention. 
perhaps part of that reason lies in the file size, as the PC version is already pushing more than 70 gigabytes, so higher bitrate videos may have just been a little bit too much for this game. But really, the overall package here is just so polished and complete that it's really hard to complain. Which brings us full circle to the question posed at the beginning of this video. Gears of War 4 does in fact live up to the franchise's legacy. It is one of the most technically accomplished and beautifully polished games available on the Xbox One. It's also one of the best PC ports we've run into in ages, which if you take into account the track record of the various other universal Windows platform games is pretty impressive indeed. To put it simply, the Coalition has done a marvelous job here with the first big budget AAA Unreal Engine 4 game on the market. But with that, we've reached the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the features of Gears of War 4, and do keep an eye out for more coverage in the future. But if you found this video interesting or enjoyable, please give us a like and subscribe, and always be sure to hit me up on Twitter. But until next time, keep those chainsaws revving.